it's my one. Uh, happy Monday day for yesterday. Happy? Yeah, I say Monday. Yeah. What's at home? Do you have a support system? Can anyone come help you? The question get worse. Just me and the little one. Good doctors always ask questions like this. If I'm sending a patient home that I'm sort of questionable on, and let's say they had a concussion, I always want to make sure that there's someone to keep an eye on them. And if they become unconscious, they have someone to call for help and to check on them. If I come home, do you want me living with you? Of course, that's the point. Every night after 12 hours of COVID patients to hang out with you and Kellen and his asthma. Interestingly enough, we've seen conflicting reports on how COVID-19 affects those with asthma. Now, if it's just asthma alone, it doesn't seem to be as bad as we expected Aaron. it to be. Erin and A, you over there. Go, eat, like eat. Disease, obesity. Those are the patients that seem to be experiencing worse symptoms and worse outcomes. We do everything we can. We hammer at official channels and every manufacturer's rep that we deal with and see what companies, if any, have unsurved. Nuts or no nuts? Uh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm in the middle of a, of a meeting with the board. Hey, everyone. I'm just making man a friend. One of the most searched terms in the height of this pandemic was how to make sourdough bread. Go figure. I've never made sourdough bread. I've never Googled it. I don't know who's sitting at home Googling it. But apparently sourdough bread was the thing everyone was making, not banana bread. Your husband's blood oxygen level is dangerously low. That, that, can't, that can't be. So one of the hallmark symptoms of COVID-19 is decreased oxygen saturation in your blood, where you're actually not getting enough oxygen from usually the edema or the scarring that's happening in your lungs as a result of the inflammation that occurs with this virus. One of the dangerous parts of COVID-19 is not only are you infected with this virus that you're fighting off, but some people have an overreaction or a cytokine storm where all these inflammatory cells come to the lungs and actually cause a bigger problem where you can't get enough oxygen going and being delivered to the rest of your body, your vital organs, your liver, your kidneys, your brain, and so forth. Our solution to that was to ventilate, meaning intubate all these patients. And as we did that more and more often, without treating them with proper medications like we have now, and we know which ones work, patients actually got worse on ventilators because we were over-ventilating people. And it's not because we're stupid or we were intentionally harming people, but it was simply because it's a novel virus and we did not have guidelines on how to best treat patients with it. We were learning about it on the go. You have a surplus of EKG leads? No, we've got a shortage, but that's a problem. Okay. The PPE situation was really dire in the beginning of this pandemic because China was hit first and a lot of our manufacturing facilities are in China. And because of that, they actually redirected all of their shipments to their country because they needed them. And as a result, we we're facing a lot of shortages for gloves, for EKG leads, for swabs, for test kits, antibacterial wipes, the vials for injections, the wiring and the tubing for ventilators. There were so many shortages that were happening simultaneously. It was a truly dire situation, especially here in the New York City area. Him rubbing his ears like that is from the mask. Oh my god, in the beginning, just wearing the mask for countless hours, my ears hurt so much. I just remember being so sore. But as we learned to use those little headpieces in the back where you could actually have the mask stay on there as opposed to on your ears, it made the world of a difference. And for those of you who haven't ever worn an N95 mask, they're uncomfortable because they offer more protection. They're more form-fitting. You have to get them fit tested, but they also put a lot of pressure on your face. They leave marks. That's why all those pictures are making the rounds of nurses, doctors who were having bruising in that area from just wearing them day in and day out. And a lot of times they were reusing equipment that was meant to be disposable. Do you work in a hospital? Yes. Could you wait for the next elevator? I appreciate you. <laughs> you know, it's funny. Um, in New York, if you ever wore your scrubs out during that period, everyone wanted to say thank you and was quite grateful, and that's amazing. But at the same time, everyone wanted to keep their distance, rightfully so. I understand you don't want to put yourself or your family members at risk, but it didn't feel good that you were being alienated like that. So it's part of the process. My mother is in there, all alone, hooked up to a machine. I just need to see her and, and tell her... 
There's a human toll that it takes on family members not being able to see your family member, and if you're the one ill, not seeing your family members. I will also venture to say, and I don't have evidence for this, but I will say that hospital errors do go up if you do not have family members present and advocating on your behalf, especially if you're unconscious. Now what we've learned from that is we're trying to keep families more updated, trying to keep them involved if they're not there at the bedside through virtual care, giving them scheduled regular phone calls calls because we realize that when we're in better communication with the family we actually get better outcomes for our patient pushing epi why is no one doing chest compressions i don't understand do some chest compressions clear do some chest compressions Lisa's now did you see those horrible chest compressions? She just put her hands on the chest and didn't even compress. Clear. Okay, I don't know what. These people have high-end experts on set. You start chest compressions, and then you use a defibrillation. You know, I, I have heard in the beginning of the pandemic, because I wasn't in the hospitals, uh, I was seeing patients outpatient, that they were decreasing the amount of chest compressions being done because they were worried about aerosolizing the virus. I actually just looked this up from the Red Cross. Performing chest compressions while wearing proper medical protective equipment and 95 respirators, or like how they have the whole body suit on, still means you should do chest compressions. Like, do them, do them, do them. I don't know why they weren't doing them. I was trying to make excuses for them. They should have been doing chest compressions from the start. Any cough? Any fever? No. Any shortness of breath? Sore throat, lots of smell. No, no, none of that. Just, just searing abdominal pain and the runs. I'm pretty sure it's my diverticulitis acting up. <clears throat> my roommate is deeply into pandemic baking. <sighs> I've avoided coming in. I don't want to catch COVID. So one of the biggest problems we faced uh, during this pandemic was patients not coming into the hospitals. And in the beginning, when we were really overwhelmed, that made a lot of sense. But as we became safer, for patients to come in. We had different policies in place in order to decrease spread. Our testing improved, our capacity improved, our PPE improved. We wanted patients to come back because a lot of times when patients delay care, their diseases and conditions get more advanced and as a result become more difficult to treat. Patients who were having uh, some signs of heart attacks were coming in much later and as a result, some of our mainstay treatments weren't working as well and the recoveries took longer. One of my main messages over the last two, three months has been to encourage patients patients to call their primary care offices, to call hospitals, to come in for the symptoms that are bothering them, and not wait. It's pink, active, breathing great. In the midst of our research with COVID-19, we actually found that there was a limited spread from mother to fetus of COVID-19, meaning that the mother could be testing positive for COVID-19, the baby was usually safe. Now, it doesn't mean there was no spread. There were some case reports of it happening, but for the large majority, we did not want mothers to panic because it wasn't happening. And children in general seem to fare better with this virus anyway. The numbers of children below the age of 10 dying with COVID-19 were spectacularly low. That doesn't mean it's completely benign for them because they could also spread this virus and be vectors, but it is reassuring for mothers especially with the levels of anxiety that they are facing for themselves. Please don't put your masks on the floor and then put them back on your face. Sean, you're a doctor, but don't put it on the floor. I talked about germs having hang time, about them uh, hanging out in the air. But folks, after they hang out in the air for those minutes or hours, where do they go? <laughs> right on the floor especially if you're walking around a hospital setting and then you come home with your shoes on guess what's on that mask man couldn't they just have me on set for one of these things okay. could have helped me make it so much more accurate my hospital actually created a state-of-the-art COVID-19 ward. Check it out as I give you the tour for that in a day of my life video. Or check out all of my good doctor reviews here in a playlist I made just for you. And as always, stay happy. Oh, damn it.
social media, and it's kind of like, kind of a bummer, you know? Like, oh, I'm sorry, this is my parade, and this is you raining on it. Cool. So grateful to be celebrating 13 years of sobriety today, thanks to everyone who helped me get here. 13 years is cute, going on 39 years over here. I feel like I don't, I like, I love work off, I do, but part of me says, ah, why, why am I still being work off, you know? I just don't know why I, I love being it, I do, it's just, I don't know, it's just, I feel like I'm burnt out. I don't know. Oh, 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 keep paying it, you know, it's just, uh, <coughs> it's just, I feel like I want to quit work up, but I want to do my topics games, you know. But I probably don't want to keep it going because I do enjoy it, you know. You know what I mean? Yeah.
This is being easy.